Hey everyone, due to some of the commentary I got back on the pet build I made, um, is it a month ago already? Are we a month into this this build for Grim Dawn? Um, a month ago, uh, I decided to come back and redo the lightning variation of the build into something that is actually more dedicated towards pets, but while keeping you active as a character. Because something I need to make clear here, for a pet build, I don't want the character to just stand there while the pets do everything. I want this character to be active in the fight, even if that being active is still just throwing out occasional tornadoes. So what we're doing with this build is instead of util instead of using all of the totems with the wind devils at once, um, we're mostly just using the wind devils specifically for maelstrom as our source of damage. Now when you actually see the damage on these, um, it's actually not going to look that impressive. But you have to remember these things live for 12 seconds and they're dealing their damage for 12 seconds. But also, you get three of them. So you're going to have three wind devils running around as your source of damage. But also, the wind devils are going to have the chance to impaired, impair the aim of the things they hit and they're going to slow the things they hit. And also reduce the elemental resistances of the things they hit. Which are going to help your your Raven and your Hellhound, but they're also going to help you deal just more damage with your Tornadoes. On the Shaman side of things, um, I have Briarthorn maxed out, and I also have a ton of pluses to Briarthorn, and he's our main constant summon. Our other main summon is going to be Conjure, Conjure Primal Spirit, and I think I have it at 11. But for all intents and purposes, it's maxed out because of all the pluses I have to that as well. And when he hits the when when he drops, it's actually a lot of damage. It's a big burst of damage. I have one point in Ground Slam and in Boldening Roar to take advantage of the plus one to all skills I'm running and the plus one in Boldening Roar I have on top of that. I have one point in Primal Bond only because the passive bonuses it provides to the character um, are support for it. The passive bonuses it provides to pets are nice. But for right now, we're actually just going to keep it at one point. And it jumps up to five with all the pluses I have floating around as well. I have one point in Mog Dragon's Pact and Heart of the Wild. And these two are almost a one point wonder. Because you just get raw health and energy regen and then percent health. I mean, in addition to poison and bleed reduction, but duration reduction. But um, yeah, these two are great just for, you know, keeping your health up. And the Occultist side of things... Raven's at 10, and Hellhound's maxed out, and I have 5 points in the Emberclaw to give it a little more of, uh, uh, give it a little more oomph, but, um, and I, and I, I dropped the point from Storm Spirit, because I, I don't think it was actually doing anything, and I still have Mend Flesh for that tiny bit of healing that provides, and right now, the reason I had that at one point initially was in case I, I wanted to use the Fiend Blood Spellblade, I think it's called? Because that gives plus two to Emberclaw. But also, we're going to be coming in this into this tree regardless um, when the next level cap increase happens. So when we jump up to 60 or 75 or whatever it is, um, the Occultus is probably going to be completely filled up to get to binding to bonds of Bismeal and uh, manipulation. And I'm going to note that I went full Shaman on this instead of full Occultist on this because the Shaman was the new class at the time. And actually, I'd probably still go Shaman anyways because the Primal Spirit is just insane. And the whole thing is, I really want, I really didn't know what this class was ultimately going to be. And it, and it wound up to be the pet class I was making. So that's why I went full Shaman instead of full Occultist. So, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to run Steps of Torment. Oh, and I wanted to point out here, gear real quick. Um, I'm not using the, the Black Grimoire of Agnipesh, despite the fact I have like four copies of the thing. I'm using something to boost my own lightning damage. And my weapon and my offhand exist for that. Pretty much everything else um, is pet related. And... Except my gloves. My gloves, I just really need new gloves, in all honesty. <laughs> They're just not good gloves right now. And, I mean, they have an unholy inscription in them because this was my vitality build was my previous thing. So, it's like, I just need new gloves in the glove slot eventually. Um, but everything else is here to support the pets. 
in keeping with the dedicated pet build stuff. And uh, I'm also going to point out that Ancestor is act is definitely better than Savage because even though Savage provides like a passive provides a passive bonus all its own, Ancestor provides your pets with vitality resistance. And to me, that's that even though there's like other great things on Ancestor, including plus one to all shaman skills, um, that vitality resistance for your pets is super yeah. super handy. So I'm going to run the whole steps uh, all the way down to Alcamos, provided I don't die. I mean, I don't think I will, but... And like I said, I want to be active as a, as a character. I just don't want to be standing in the corner doing nothing. So a lot of this is actually going to be... And I mean, a lot of the, act, the activeness of the character is going to be just throwing out their tornadoes. Like, I'm not going to run up and start, like... Lightning Nova and things, mostly because my cast speed's terrible, but. Um, I want my care I want the character to be much more active than a standard summoner would be. So how is everyone doing today? <laughs> I kind of tired right now, in all honesty. So, um, tactically speaking, I do want to keep running around, though. That's the other reason to use, in my opinion, just to use the, uh... To use the tornadoes as opposed to, like, maybe gearing around savagery, or picking up savagery, even though savagery does help benefit. Um, I mean, well, I mean, savagery would be a terrible choice for this, but... Uh, yeah, it's like, the tornadoes, you can basically keep yourself moving... Keep yourself out of dots, and you'll generally be fine. Also, I do want to point out that the Black Grimoire of Agnapesh is a totally legitimate, like, dedicated pet built thing, because Agnapesh is kind of crazy. Um, but for this build, like I, I'm going to repeat this a lot probably in this entire video. Um, even though I consider it a dedicated pet build, I want to be active as the, uh, I want to be active as a player and that requires using a lightning ability in this case. Um, oh yeah, the other abilities you could use, uh, that I think would totally be legitimate as well are devouring swarm and grasping vines because of the, um, Devouring Storm and Grasping Vines, I think, would work as well. Um, because they, they line up with what, um, Primal Bond puts out. And that would be, that would be a build unto itself, I think, is using Devouring Swarm and Grasping Vines with your pets. And using, um... And using the, uh, the the primal bond to its fullest. <laughs> Frozen while I'm trying to open the damn wall. Now, if you were making a vital, the vitality version of this build would absolutely use the Black Grimoire. 
Because it's a Vitality Grimmar. I mean, it's almost like they planned it to use that. Oh, the female character getting hit has such a weird scream. Just ah. Now I will note I do personally miss rotating through the the totems and the wind devils. Because the other reason I tend to do things like this where I, I mix other abilities in is I, I do want to take advantage, full advantage if I can, of the two class combos. And have fun while playing the game because to me it's just not fun to sit there and just if like if I were a debt like a real pet build user, I'd just be sitting in the corner and be very, very boring for me. Man, that'd be awesome if I were if I were fire aether based in some way. It does fire aether, right? Of spell weaving, yeah. Too bad the, of spell weaving was not lightning, lightning vitality or something. I just run by that first group. Unless I see a star above the guy's head, I just skip it. And however active I want to be, I actually don't want to be in the middle of things like with the Nova. That was some screen shake, wasn't it? Whoa ho ho! Excuse me, sir. Ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. That was a ma'am that hit me. King Ligards. Put, I actually want to get the crack boats done, now that I think about it. I've just been using them a lot lately. Now a weird thing that I would consider for this class, 
And actually, this would be more for uh, someone who's really dedicated to making something with totems. Would be to grab the Herald set and use it. Or no, um, is it the Herald? Yeah, the Herald set. Mostly because the Herald's mask has cooldown reduction. So you could easily, like, build around cooldown reduction as best you can to get as many tornadoes and totems out as possible. I actually might do that for that, that like, more totemy totem user I made. I don't care about no weather chest. Wait, did I? Oh, I'm. I wasn't even looking at the map. Yep, we're back here. Buddy, <laughs> Primal Spirit not doing work. Which way do we gotta go? Okay. Yeah, I was like, wait. <laughs> I saw that, that block there and I was like, wait, which way am I going again? It's like, oh, I have to go all the way down. to Alcamos real quick. That is the main advantage of this, this style of, uh, this style of build, is you can just run through everything just super quick. I'd almost say in full tilt disregard for your own safety, but you, you do still have to watch out for some things. Okay, first off, I'm going to run over to the merchant, because we, we can do that very quickly. Also, I'm going to point out, those those orbs, as far as I know, are vitality damage. So that's one of the reasons to go for Ancestor. Because if you come in here a lot, um, you're, you're going to want your pets to not die instantly when those things show up. Also, I want to point out that the, the Stormhound, not that great, in all honesty. To me, you just get so much more out of Ancestor in the passive you gain, and then in the uh, the plus one that all skills off the the relic. I 
I don't want to sound I don't want to sound like I'm griping too much. I've just not had a terrific day, and then having to deal with explaining myself on a build. I mean, I I, I get I'm not saying don't criticize what I put up. I actually want people to criticize it so it'll make me better. But um, at both both creating and presenting you know build videos. But at the same time, um, I've had comments that are just out just out and out just griping, and it's it's actually kind of annoyed me today. I mean, it's not even like it's, like, griping, griping. It's, it's actually, it hasn't been insulting, but it's, like, it's almost a read-between-the-lines type of insulting, and I just didn't, like, I, I just didn't want to let it go unchecked and let this build go unupdated. Damn it! <laughs> I'm starting to get through this entire thing without actually resorting to bringing up my primal spirit, but... No, oh, we gotta kill that guy first. Because, uh... Oh, man, do I have the... Do I have the ointment? Okay, I do. We're actually gonna let this come off cooldown in a second. Woohoo! <laughs> like my heart's in my ears. <laughs> Don't. Ow! <laughs> Come on, guys, take it down already. Oh, nuts. Ooh, missed me. Oh, God. That was frightening. Well, that's Okamo's dead, and let's see what we get. A Storm Scion. Okay, so that was running through uh, Steps of Torment and um, Gates of Anguish. So uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.